are the private equity titans, a proud and trusted partner of Apple Rock Capital, and we're so excited to be here today to discuss the future of our fund in 2024 at the 2023 Q3 planning meeting. My name is Bess, and I'm joined with my colleagues Jason, Katie, Mafe, Robert, and Zach, and we look forward to discussing our fund strategy over the next five quarters. We'll first discuss our executive summary and the market overview and how that imp impacts our fund strategy and considerations. We'll then evaluate our opportunities and then finish with our final recommendations for the fund moving forward. The fund strategy has three main objectives. One is cash management, maintain liquidity, and third is to assess and modify its asset allocation as needed. In order to do this, the fund will take action in two main areas. One, it will be to execute grind downs as well as use cash to resize maturing loans. And second, it will be to fulfill redemptions at 2.5% as well as redefining Core Plus by selling its office and luxury residential assets. This fund was presented with two potential investment opportunities. We have decided on passing on the equity one and only executing the credit investment opportunity. As a core plus fund, our target is to stay between 8% to 12% of returns. And as you can see on this graph, the fund weights its allocation by sector to a benchmark. The fund does this for two main reasons. One is to make sure that its asset allocation is at par with the market conditions. And second is to strategize what the fund activity will look like in the future. As we are a $5 billion fund with a 55% loan value cap and a required fulfilled redemption of 2.5% of net asset value. On the next five quarters, this is what activity for the fund will look like. On Q4 of 2023, it will sell office and fulfill redemptions at 2.5%. The following quarter, it will sell its residential, luxury residential, resize three residential loans, as well as execute the write downs. The following quarter, it will fund a mezzanine loan and it will fulfill redemptions again. And for the next two quarters, it will have one mezzanine loan draw on each. And on Q4 of 2024, it will fulfill redemptions again. As our fund approaches next steps, we found it essential to look at the market we are currently operating in and where we see that market going. We are currently facing high interest rates, persistent market volatility, and a potential recession continues to loom. Although we have seen a recent decrease of inflation rates, there's still the question of how long it'll take the Fed to get back down to its target of 2%. Now, what do these overall market dynamics mean for the real estate sector specifically? With high bid-ask spreads, debt maturity looming, and the question of what the Fed will do next, the real estate sector has inevitably seen a slowdown. Sales transactions are down 26% in the first half of 2023 in comparison to 2015 to 2019. And as you may expect, office has been hit especially hard with a sales drop of 60% in the first half of the year. Banks are tightening their lending standards and demand for commercial real estate loans is similar to that of 2008, which speaks volumes of where the market currently stands. In the face of a potential recession, our fund is focused on building resiliency within our fund. As you all may have heard, we are approaching what people are calling a soft landing or a growth recession. The inverted yield curve has been in place now for 12 months, and this has historically been a sign of a recession on the horizon. In this scenario, we will be facing liquidity challenges, valuations will continue to decline, and meeting redemption requests will become more challenging. Investor sentiment is something we'll have to keep a close eye on as our risk-averse investors may potentially pull back their capital commitment, leading to limited growth and investment opportunities. In these tightened lender markets, we will have to keep a close eye on refinancing our current debt, as well as taking out new debt. Our fund strategy moving forward is to adapt to this low growth environment with robust cash management and additional write downs within our portfolio. Our portfolio currently consists of various asset types and we found it essential to reevaluate where we saw the most long term growth potential. Our write downs listed above are a clear indicator of where we have the most confidence moving forward. We are currently focused on industrial and data centers with only a 5% additional write down. With the growth of AI and tech sectors, as well as regionalization to meet customer demand, we see long-term growth potential in each of these asset types. Next, with a slightly more cautious approach and a 7.5% additional write-down, we have residential, retail, and storage. Residential, we believe there will always be a demand for in the right market. 
as the U.S. is facing a continuous housing shortage of 3.9 million units. Retail, we are specifically focused on grocery anchored as it, as it currently makes up 25% of retail inventory throughout the U.S. We have seen strong growth in recent times and we believe that that will continue. Storage, we see as being recession resistant with strong demand factors and low capex needs. And finally, most cautiously, we have our land at a 10% additional write down and our office with a 15% additional write down. This is due to ambiguity in the market and unknowns of what office will look like moving forward. We use this analysis to carefully analyze each investment opportunity to make sure it fits with our long-term fund strategy. So as Mafe mentioned earlier, we have three main items that we're working on right now. The first is cash management. So as we stand here today at the end of Q3, looking ahead to 2024, we want to make sure we have enough cash on hand uh, to feel safe and also fulfill the obligations that we have made to our investors. So we're being very conscious of cash management. We're assuming no new capital commitments during this period, and we plan to fulfill 2.5% redemption requests at the end of Q1 and Q3 uh, of next year. Additionally, we plan to take on the strategy while not uh, taking on as much while well, staying sub 50% uh, levered on debt. And then finally, we plan to reposition our portfolio to better align with what we consider to be the long-term market trends. So another consideration we actually also have is we have three upcoming loan maturities within uh, the first quarter of 2024. So these three loans are in residential assets and they total $121 million. So when we resize these loans based off a 1.35 times debt service coverage ratio requirement, we found that we will need an additional $39 million cash infusion to cover the new loan amount, which is lower than the previous loan amount. So we've accounted for this in our analysis, and we have enough cash on hand to make this investment. Next, we received broker opinion of values of six different assets, and we ultimately chose to keep four of those assets on our books. The four assets we chose to keep are industrial, a data center, a retail asset, and a storage portfolio. With respect to industrial, we feel we are currently underweighted towards industrial in our portfolio, and we believe strongly in the uh, future growth potential of the asset and the current bullish markets today. Additionally, we have a, the opportunity to mark rents up to market, which would be a 35% increase, so we want to be able to take advantage of that moving forward. With respect to the data center, we are very bullish on this asset type. There's high demand for it as artificial intelligence continues to grow, and there's extremely limited uh, supply of this space right now. And given the power constraints to build these types of assets, we expect that to be the case moving forward. We also have the ability to add on to this asset, um, so the future expansion potential makes it attractive to us. On the retail side, we like that this is only 40% levered. Uh, that's below our target and something we want to keep on our books. Uh, we're also a strong believer of the grocery anchored thesis, and we believe the fact that there are credit discount tenants in this retail center means that even in a potential recessionary environment, these tenants will continue to receive cash flows from customers, lowering the risk of bankruptcy and lowering the risk of default. And finally, on the storage portfolio, we found that storage typically tends per to uh, perform well in recessionary times. Additionally, this asset actually has 0% leverage on it, which is very attractive to us. And we also believe that there's more scale um, to be had here and that value typically increases with scale in these assets. So while we have three assets here, we would like the potential to add on assets moving forward. So the two assets that we chose to dispose of are office and our uh, luxury retail or residential asset. On the office side, we do feel we're a little overweighted towards office at the moment. It's also 60% levered, which makes us a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, we believe that now is the right time to sell it because this is a commodity product and as there continues to be a flight to quality, uh, we think that this asset might actually be phased out moving forward. Additionally, it is an assumable loan, so we will, be, we will be able to sell this within the next 60 days and receive those cash flows before the end of 2023. And on the luxury product, we found that typically luxury product in a, a market environment that might be more difficult does not perform as well as more suburban type of product. So that was one reason we were hesitant to hold on to this asset. We also are cognizant of the fact that there is a loan maturity coming due. Our fixed rate loan previously has been accretive to cash flows. We're not sure that's going to be the case moving forward when we refinance into a higher interest rate environment. And there's also 15% of construction stock um, coming up. So for those reasons, we've decided this one is probably the right time to exit our portfolio. 
So this slide shows our cash flow analysis and how these actions will impact our cash flows today at the end of Q3, moving through the end of Q4 2024. I think the items to call out is we're starting with $200 million in cash right now and we'll end Q4 2024 with $61 million of cash. Um, we're assuming, again, no new capital commitments and fulfilling our 2.5% redemption request in this period. So we're comfortable with this analysis and feels that it will position us well moving into 2025 because we'll have enough cash uh, on the books to cover those redemption requests coming up in 2025 as well. So the next three slides just illustrate our portfolio snapshot of these actions. So you'll see, again, our portfolio today at the end of Q3 2023. Two items that we think are important to define are spot liquidity and net liquidity. Spot liquidity, we're defining as cash and securities. Net liquidity, we're defining as cash, securities, and available line of credit. Now, we're not dipping in at all to our line of credit throughout this analysis. Again, we think as we face potential recessionary period in 2024, line of credit, we want to have that full $150 million balance on our books. Also in Q4, you'll see the effect of our office disposal. It decreases our exposure to office, decreases leverage within our office assets, and also decreases leverage of the overall portfolio as well. In Q1 2024, the main item we want to call attention to is the write down of our assets. Uh, this does actually serve to increase leverage as we write down the gross and net asset values, uh, but it's a leverage amount that we're comfortable with, and we feel this write down reflects the true value in today's markets. And finally, we don't have too many actions coming in Q3 and Q4 of next year. We, like this year, will be anticipating planning for 2025 during that time. But we do end Q4 with an 11.7% net liquidity, which we think is a comfortable amount and a liquidity position that is prudent in today's environment. Finally, with respect to leverage, um, we have a 55% LTV cap on our portfolio. We've conducted this analysis and have been very cognizant of leverage and our asset disposals and which ones we keep. We actually found that as we conducted this analysis, we stayed below 50% leverage throughout the entire period. So again, we think in a market that's facing several headwinds right now, maintaining sub 50% leverage is the wise decision moving forward. In evaluating the investment opportunities we mentioned earlier that we're going to pass on the 125 unit multifamily acquisition in Northeast and then pursue the mezzanine financing of the 900 units in the, uh, the Southeast. One of the main reasons we decided to forego on the multifamily is the risk return profile. The project's only 50% leased and only uh, has an expected IR of about five and a half. The rent growth uh, scenario that we model is scenario one, which is low rent growth in the near term than 3% Later on, we feel like the uh, recent delivery across the street is going to be heavily concessed and directly compete with our uh, tenant profile. In, model, in, <clears throat> in modeling an exit cap rate, we understand you know forward curve on a 10-year treasury is increasing. When we exit in year five, the 10-year treasury is about 4.95. Adding about 150 basis point spread, we're exiting about a 6.5 exit cap rate. In financing, if we were to pursue this uh, deal, we would finance it using our line of credit, which is 225 plus SOFR, which is cheaper than the debt fund, about 325. We'd wade through the lease-up period with our line of credit, have about three months of operating history before refinancing in, in month 10. So the risk return profile, 50% um, doesn't really meet our core plus fund return objectives and expected return five and a half. We decided to forego this opportunity. So in regards to the mezzanine opportunity, we decided to pursue this. Uh, it's a $42 million cash outflow with a projected 12% return, a 1.56 equity multiple, and includes a cash suite. Uh, given the risk profile of the opportunity, we decided to uh, pursue this. And that we would define that by where we sit within the capital stack, the 50 to 67%. Uh, we're ongoing relationships with the institutional partner maintaining that throughout and their ability to execute throughout uh, on a stabilized asset. And finally, just the amount of buffer that we have before there's an impairment on the position. So looking at the sensitivity analysis onto the right, we have asset valuation sensitized to decreases in NOI and cap rate expansion. The base case in the upper left indicates a cap rate, or the 6% cap rate right there includes 120 basis point expansion over uh, the day one acquisition. And it's not until we begin to cross over into the red areas there or the threshold of a $202 million value uh, before we begin to have impairment on the debt, mezzanine, and proceeds to the mezzanine position. So 
And finally, our SWOT analysis, analysis of the two opportunities. So just to recap, we're going to be foregoing the equity opportunity based on the fact that although there is an uh, attractive opportunity to acquire the property and leverage our line of credit for more accretive returns to the portfolio, uh, simply the risks associated with lease-up velocity and local competition within the market just proved to be too great to justify pursuing. And then finally, the credit opportunity. Uh, the risk return profile was very attractive, especially being able to provide something in the higher end of what our target portfolio uh, return rate would be going into a recessionary environment. So based on this SWOT analysis and our previous market analysis from Katie, we believe that our, the next five quarters are going to be driven by our strategy of weathering the storm and being safe with our liquidity. So in the first, our first action item will be to dispose of our luxury residential and office assets, followed by refinancing those three loans that are maturing in 2024. We'll then pursue our equity, our credit opportunity and also redeem um, or fulfill our redemptions along the way. In summary, we have strong conviction for our ability to weather the storm based on our net liquidity of 11.7% and our leverage below the 55 cap at 49.2%. We don't want to be um, caught catching the falling knife and we think that being able to be flexible and have liquidity during this time will be will set us up to weather the storm and grow long term. We also think this focus on being keenly aware of what the benchmark is allocating for their sectors, but then also allowing us to um, differentiate by our other categories by pursuing storage and data centers will allow us to maintain growth while also differentiating from other funds. And with that, we would like to discuss any questions you may have.